Hi everyone, welcome back. We're continuing on with our wildflower challenge, okay? This time I think I'll do a little, uh, some uh, yellow and some white daisies. Daisies are one of the first uh, flowers that uh, uh, I learned how to paint so many years ago. And uh, they, I've painted them so many different ways now, you know. Now we're gonna paint them with, again, with that casual impressionistic uh, type of edge. And uh, maybe not as much as I do on some of my bigger compositions, but we'll do that. Same thing, same boards that I used that I talked about in, in the number one. And the light gray color that I made from black, white, and some yellow. I'm gonna take my three quarter inch fusion brush here and I, which was some uh, yellow oxide, maybe a bit of extender in it to it this time, so it slides around a bit easier, but I do like it when it gets that fracturing edge, and let's just drop some of that in. Let's change the tone of it slightly. A bit of the burnt sienna, maybe a touch of the green, a touch of the violet there to it, and that changes the, get those different tones that are just real pretty, and what I do sometimes is I think about the centers of the daisies that I might be painting. And I'll pull those colors out and use them as accents into the background back behind the painting. And uh, that just, uh, you know, it pulls the center of the daisy out into the background. And it just makes it interesting. Um, and that's what I like to do. I like to paint on backgrounds that have a lot of interest in, especially in a small composition. I'm gonna paint them with the uh, number eight Fusion Flat this time. We used the Filbert on the first one. You saw that, you could use that one as well. Uh, let's go down here, grab some of our whites right into this. Complement of the yellow is a violet. So let's just take a violet color right out over here and we'll lighten that up and we'll use that to help tone down gray down our yellow to make a beautiful soft gray and this gray will go very well with the with what I have going on here with the yellows and stuff because it is um, it has the yellows in it let's just position one out here like this so I kind of turn the flowers around okay let's uh, make one pointed out let's make this one going away here and uh, we can make a you know we could make one more of a Maybe a big one, round one here, and one turning here. It, you know, there's just a thousand ways that you can do it, and that's your job to uh, kind of decide it here. I don't like that quite so flat. But um, let's turn, let's make more of a, a round one here, which means I'll equalize the, the petal lengths out a bit more, right like that, okay? And uh, maybe uh, one coming out this way and maybe one coming out like this so we'll make a uh, we'll make a uh, bit of the stems and stuff here coming out so I'll take some green maybe a bit of burnt sienna in it and we'll give the ideas here of some stems coming through and notice I paint them just real quick I break and fracture the edges off there okay I don't want to get bogged down in any details right now let's put a bit of green around because it's kind of nice to see sometimes. So sometimes I add this later, sometimes I just kind of dance my brush around with this right now. And it all depends, you know, usually, like when I am uh, painting and painting small compositions like this, it's better to do like four or five compositions in a day and, and they'll get, they hopefully will get better and better as you loosen up a bit. You know, usually your first one is a a little bit stiff and they get better and better here like that so that's that's going to be different and kind of and kind of nice let's go in and let's work some contrast let's take some uh, quinacridone violet some burnt sienna and let's work a bit of that dark so that's some of the colors I used in the, the backgrounds here and we'll use that into the centers here of these little daisies Tons, that's the beautiful thing about daisies is there's just hundreds of varieties of them and so you can really have a lot of fun with them. You know, let's take some, um, let's do some Daryulite yellow in, and uh, Hansa yellow into these uh, centers here. Push that in, right in there, put a little bit in here. A little touch in there 
And that just uh, gives you a little variation. See, I'm not even being perfect with that right now. I don't really want to be too perfect with that um, because I want some uh, some variations and some differences and stuff like that uh, into it. And I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to leave the stroke and difference there right now. And, you know, that little bit of green there looked great as well, right in there. Just like that. So maybe I'll touch a little bit of green here and there. See, that's kind of pretty. Sometimes, you know, you, you watch what's happening, especially when you're painting with a dirty brush. And if something happens and looks great, don't overdo it, but maybe work with it a little bit and add a little bit more. So let's uh, take just a bit of that and... We can take that, that gray and that green. That's kind of a pretty color. We can work that out. See, this will tone down just a bit of our daisies here, too, where we're going to be setting the light colors back on top. And, I, I again, I always look for that kind of stuff, little bits. And having a bit of that yellow showing through into that daisy as well, pushing that back. But So now what we'll do is we'll come in, put some of that gray and some of those colors into our brush start to lighten it up and we'll just touch and lift off here like this to uh, start these petals like this into these these daisies here and they might pick up some of that other color now sometimes i will push in and out like that to create a softness out into that petal and the little streaking of the color see and i like that into the daisy here let's pull some in here here let's pull out just a bit so I don't always pull in sometimes I pull out for a little different look to the petal and you can push in and out there like that see that makes a pretty little color carry that thicker paint just just pull in now let's gray down just a bit for this guy right out here so he's not quite as bright push in and out a bit so see how that just smears that color around and you just do it with, you know if you use a lot of paint and you do it while it's wet you get some some great uh, pushes sometimes i i don't like to touch it when it's wet because you know you can blur it all into the same color but sometimes you can do that it's kind of nice let's build a little bit more here pull in a little wider petal Turn your brush into different angles, sometimes flat, sometimes chiseled in there. And let's push in and out. That's where I really like to push in and out a bit. Get some of that movement. Establish some of that movement for that, that daisy. See, that this makes them kind of pretty. It, it uh, you know, will make them look like you've painted with wet oils and you have it. Sometimes I'll put in a little bit of extender so a color slides a little different. Gives you a different look. Make sure your finger's kind of clean. Pull out. See how you lift off some of that color right in there. Get some different daisies. Let's gray this up a bit more here. Now, if some of this starts to dry up out here, you can always take a little water, add it, and see it reconstitutes right away. Everything reconstitutes. You can do that for a couple hours with the Heritage on your palette. So if it starts to dry up and you still want to use that particular color, you can. Just add just a touch of water. The water will stay the pure solvent for the paint for a few hours. So you can use it. Let's uh, get some different looks to that. Oh, that's pretty. And sometimes I just, I wish I could just paint them with my finger because I like how the finger does it. And a little bit of color, pull a little bit pulling out like that one's turned down like that. That's a nice little bit. Let's go back. Use the corner of the brush with some burnt sienna and some violet here and just reset some of our darks contrast there. Just pick up a little burnt sienna, pick up a little violet, even a little bit of the red violet, the darker one. Nice, especially up and around our center of interest here. Get that nice contrast right in there. Those two right there. More burnt sienna. Change the color so some of them a little more burnt sienna. Not the red violets. 
Let's grab a little bit of that dark light, rework our yellows, just tap some of that around. Try not to be too heavy and destroy everything we did before, but just kind of add some of that interest there into that center. And some of that, just tap that around. I like the dark light yellow, it's a semi-transparent yellow orange so you can easily just put put it on the corner of your brush like this and use this and because it's a nice semi-transparent it won't destroy what's underneath it like the yellow oxide will but that is more opaque so you can start through first and see just how it's going with uh, that uh, Darya light yellow and it might be all you need and again I think that's probably all we're going to do we'll use a little bit of Hansa now this is brighter and different. We'll think about the light coming up here from the top, uh, the top left there. Tap some of that around. Let's tap just a bit of that, not as much, into that one. And back again with quite a bit into this one here. Tap that around. Got a little bit too much, so I'll just take some off my brush and just kind of tap that around. You can soften that a bit with some of that Darya light if it you lose some of it, that dark light is just really great for doing that kind of work around the, the centers of these daisies like this. Just fun. Different. I do all different kinds of flowers like this. this but I like this wild and crazy daisy too. We can be more precise, you know. I mean, he, I, I like these wild petals here. Sometimes I'll do this with um, like, um, you know, some of your dianthus and, and stuff that or some that I have multi layers of petals I like that look and then I'll come back in with a second layer of petals and uh, it works quite nice let's just add a bit more light right to this one right here and reach that petal just a bit that's kind of nice there but you know with daisies and if you look at daisies out in nature you know they have a lot of open spaces and stuff between them which are uh, works out well now you can take out and you know just push in a little more light out into something back here like this that it just makes it look like there's just more stuff going on out there lights and stuff into the background that works really nice I'm going to add a bit more into my greens here a little bit of my pine green and Hansi yellow into some of these greens there. I like the variations of greens, you know, within the painting, especially around your center of interest. I like these nice, bright, I like brights and darks and contrast. But see, the variations of the green start adding more light, life to your painting. And for me, for years, um, you know, I always would uh, have problems with... Uh, leaves I always make them the same no matter where I am I make them the same and uh, you know it's something that I still I have that habit to paint the same type of leaf so you know I tell myself all the time you know change the leaf change the leaf I'm going to put a little more contrast in some of the darks right around the centers here and you could use a little negative painting around that. But see, that pops out that daisy a bit more. And uh, you can push back and forth a bit to destroy the edge there. But uh, you could use it to shape up a petal edge or something like that. Uh, get that stem line in there a little bit more. And then come back with some of your lighter greens as well. Sitting back over that. To help, uh, but that that original dark gives a bit more of a nice contrast in there. So you can vary that contrast, but don't you know? One of the techniques I like to use a lot, and you saw that in the rose challenge and everything, is to come back and negative paint around, which is you know going around some of this stuff. Use your brush and just go around. The other thing when you're painting quick compositions like this is move, 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 move. Don't stay static for too long. Get moving with those uh, with those those brushes. Keep them moving, and uh, yeah, it. Uh, but it it takes a bit of pro practice and confidence to get there. But that's why we do these challenges, you know, um, is so that you can uh, practice that. And 
that the purpose of this, when we do these challenges like this, is not to give you something you can paint. It's something it give you something that you have to practice and practice your speed at the same time. That's what we like to do. That's how you learn. That's how I teach my students. Is that they they uh, uh, they have to they have to practice it. You have to step beyond. You have to really dig down and practice it. You know, it takes takes some practice to get to some of these techniques and get that speed and that confidence to build those pedals. So now I'll come back, and if I feel that uh, I can uh, widen out some of my pedals and add a little different look to them here, I'll come through. Like this will be pretty to add this right up over that green leaf there and let some of the green come through, making it uh, almost a transparent type of petal there. A lot of people always ask me, how do you paint the transparent? The transparency of something and you know I learned it from one of the lectures of of what John Singer Sargent said that he says transparency is an optical thing it is not just use color transparently and glaze it's an optical thing and I thought about that for a long time and tried a bunch of different things and yeah it is and that's what I do there that's not transparent, that's opaque paint and it just mixes up with a little bit of the green and then now because you see all these other petals and stuff, you see that as a petal and you see the green and then your eye says it's transparent because it sees green underneath it or green in it. That's what it's doing. So now you got a couple of pretty little daisies there. Now we can, you know, that last little blue we added in the first one, that would be kind of pretty in here as well. Not that you need to do it in every single painting, but it would be pretty. So let's take a little bit of it, and let's leave it a little brighter this time. Let's take some phthalo blue and some white, okay, and uh, we'll use this. Let's bring it in. I always like to bring it in from the upper left. I don't know why. I just like that sky up there and that that kind of sky color. See, that's kind of pretty. See how that coolness right there works against that warmth, you know. And I'll use some water. Now, you could use extender, but, you know, extender's going to let you play with it for a while, and you, then you might end up blending everything all out. So it's not always great to use a bunch of extender. And here comes this one. Let's just do some through light. Pull it right back down through here like this. Maybe a touch of it coming through the painting here. That's just kind of pretty. Breaks up those little daisies a little bit more there. And um, yeah, that uh, that works pretty good. Let's take a let's take our flat again that we're painting with our number eight. Let's remember if you add it into that background, add a stroke or two up into your your daisies and stuff here too. That creates great harmony. Pick the shadow side of them. Pull a little bit of that color into there as well. And there we go. Just like that. Fun little, uh, fun little thing. Like I say, you can add, you know, sometimes with a painting like this where you have, you know, very casual leaves. Let's just put it that way. They're very, very casual. Sometimes it's nice to come out to some place like this and put a little bit more of a structured shape to the leaf. I don't always do that, but you know, this it uh, sometimes I like that. So I make them more of an oval. You just put a, a few of them around. Let's let's uh, put a bit of this color. Let's come right out here and put one in that is more. A, traditional shape um, and I find people like that as well you know it is the I don't do it on all of them our job is not to just do everything exactly the same all the time our job is to as artists is to create new things new ways of doing things new things and uh, so I'll add a few of those see it gives a little bit of a different look when you make a more of a structured leaf in there um, you know, it, there's good parts and bad parts about it. And everyone's different. If you like it, put a few of them in, you know, and, uh, I do. I kind of like that. I think I'll put a little blue with that. Make a pretty little blue green right there. See, that's a pretty color. Let that just kind of swirl a bit there. 
And I might put that one petal there right back up on top of that. It makes a different little thing. Put a daisy petal here right back up on top of that. And since that's wet, I'm just going to use white in my petal, my, my brush, and push a bit. And then I'll create that bit of a transparent look to that particular petal there. Let's pick up the one on the other side. And I think that's good. I don't think I need to play with that anymore. It's just a fun, fun little painting. You can do bedaisy petals like I do out here on this one that are more opaque. You know, this one's a little different, a little softer, a little bigger. Try different sizes of them. That's the other thing is, you know, if you're like me, I have a terrible habit is I tend to start getting bigger, bigger, bigger. You know, and I had some wonderful questions that's on our online forum on the Jansen Art Online where my students talked to me. And uh, she was saying, you know, how do you get that rose to the right size? And she goes, that keeps growing on me. And I, th and I said it in the earlier, ch in earlier, and um, a lot of people overlook it because, you know, when you're lo watching a video, you know, you can't catch every little thing all the time. And that's why we say, watch it again, watch it again, watch it again. Uh, and I do that. That's why I do with study videos when I get it from other artists and stuff and I want to see how their brush moves and everything. I watch them hundreds of times. Um, but I said don't ever paint a rose bigger than your fist. Okay? Because that's the natural movement inside of your, your hand and stuff there. So you can take off and lift and and your brush manipulates inside the side of your fist. Now we learned that from Rose Molly. Those of you that you know, love the Norwegian rose mauling and the painting of the scrolls that I, this, that I had learned that years ago from a master rose mauler that said, you always spin inside your hand. That's the natural spinning motion of the hand. And you'll note, I noticed that, you know, when I went over to Europe to study and did all the, and looked and looked and looked at all these beautiful paintings hanging in the Louvre and the Museum d'Orsay and, you know, and I, and, you know, up into the Rijksmuseum up in the Netherlands and I would, and most of the time, they're painting no rose bigger than a, than a fist, because that and that's just the natural size of it. And so, no matter what you're painting, is you try to do that. And so, you know, like these daisies. Well, unless I go to more African daisies, they're getting a little bit big, but that's not so bad. This I enjoy this type of size too, but it's hard to keep them small if you're like me because I have this natural tendency to grow, grow, grow. Especially if I stroke it, if I'm planning on layers and doing two or three times painting something, they'll grow on me. Now, how do you get rid of it? Oh, you could easily back paint down like I showed you on some of the, a couple of the rose lessons. Back painted back down with the background, got it back down to a workable size and the rose looked great. Um, same thing will happen with these little wildflowers. This I'm not going to worry about. I like those little that size there, but it's about max for what you would want to, about maximum of what you would want to do. They're a little bigger than what I did on the first one there, okay? But uh, yeah. So now we did multi petal ones. We'll in the next ones we'll look at some uh, some softer ones, some of the other type of blossoms they have, you know, that we can paint out there. All right. Okay. I'll see you on the next one. Enjoy. And it, like always, if you know. Hit that like button down there. That helps us out a lot. Make a comment on there. And uh, if you want to check anything out, we have downloadable photos of all of this stuff. You can uh, you go right over to our online our online class, Dance and Art Online, and you can download the video there. You can download uh, this, the photo, a final nice photo of everything that I paint right there. Just look for the challenges, okay? All right, I'll see you next time.